Yep. He was one of the first guys into Berlin I didn't after have any I fell. Yeah. So this is written June 7, 1945. My darling Kathy, this afternoon for the second time I rooted through the Reich Chancellery here in Berlin on the hunt for souvenirs and story material. I wrote a story but all I could find by way of souvenirs in the rubble was this note paper. About 30 different German medals, very elaborate, and a large Nazi banner stitched with gold wire on red background with a black swastika. Imagine it used to hang in the hallway. Where people used to see Hitler, Goring, Goebbels, and the rest. I went into what's left of Hitler's office and, un and the underground shelter where he committed suicide. Although the Russians and a good many Germans here believe he's still alive. That's creepy. Since we arrived on Wednesday, I've done little but run around the city, climbing through the ruins of the Reichstag, the Kaiser's Palace, Goring's and Go Goebbels' houses, the Olympic Stadium, and a host of other places. The roads are clear, but any building of any size in the city is smashed. Most of the houses are badly damaged, too. Fortunately, I'm living in a modern one in the suburbs with a, with a large room with windows, carpets, and electric lights. A maid runs a vacuum over the rug every morning. Water for our bath is heated by an electric switch. I don't know how the Russians managed to do it so soon, but most of the city is lit. No street lights or anything. Part of Hitler's raid shelter, um, air raid shelter, is complete with kitchens, lounges, bedrooms, and is lit with electricity. But the water covers the thing. Berlin is so badly smashed, I can't see how they will ever really resurrect it. But a few nightclubs are operating with weak beer and forest girls. Odd buses are running in certain sections of the tubes. I haven't written the tubes because I doubt I could stand the smell of the Russian soldiers the dirtiest crew I've ever seen. They treat the Germans a lot rough, rougher than we do, which is probably a good idea if they take whatever they want. Trading values in Berlin are like what they were in Holland for a while. <coughs> Some of the fellows have picked up expensive cameras for a tin of bully beef or a pack of cigarettes. Cigarettes worth 20 marks to a German and 225 apiece. One offered me a new piano accordion today for 300 smokes, but I'm looking for a watch very scarce the Russians. There are a lot of things I could tell you, but you'll probably read them in the main belief before this letter reaches you. But before you swear yourself silly at my long-windedness, I'd better tell you that I still don't know when I'm going to be back in Brussels. I may leave here in three or four days, and then again I may not be there for a couple of weeks. Things are very indefinite. They always are with me, as you've probably noticed. As far as discom as comfort is concerned, conditions are here are ideal. We we're lucky enough to be eating American food. Now I understand why they always look so sleek and roly poly. It's by far the best food I've had in the army. Then too, you can buy our supplies through the PX. Camels, gum, bars, etc. And that's about two thousand percent better than anything out of N the N A A F I. All that's because we're living in the American zone. The American zone. There are about 250 correspondents kicking around in it. I've never seen so many on one assignment in my life. But I still itch to be back in Brussels and find out what's going on with you. I haven't had any mail from you or anyone else who's leaving there, and I miss those letters like all hell. There should be a library of them waiting for me when I get back. Somebody hasn't sent me halfway to the moon said a minute ago that you've probably read all that I've seen and done in Berlin, but you can't have read that I love you. That thought belongs in our private dreams, not for publication, at least not yet. But it's in my mind all the time, and I say goodnight before I go to sleep, darling, every time and again. I haven't been able to write those words since leaving the last town I stayed in. That was bad Oyen House and the spa center. After that, I'd hop to Brunswick and then here. I've been running around too much to settle down to writing. I have to travel from here to there every day and write my stories at night. After I finish that job, the three other fellows in the room were growling for the lights to come out. But today, I did nothing but sightseeing, and I wrote only one story. Tomorrow night, I have to go to a press conference. At 10 o'clock, of course. During the day, I want to interview a Russian girl of traffic ask about her sex life, and so on, and hunt up four Canadians who are around, who are around here somewhere. They lived in Berlin all through the war. I also 
also want to find time to interview Marlena Dietrich's mother, who lives in Berlin. So I'll be pretty busy. busy. But not too busy to think of you and to throw a few wishes at the stars. They showed their shy faces. It rained every damn day. It's rained every damn day for more than two weeks. In Berlin, in the rain, it's far from true. Some night next week, I hope to go to a night club and do a story on the city's nightlife. I haven't seen any of it so far. So there you are, my lady. A long letter on Adolf Hitler's stationery. Show it to our children and let them see that I love them so very dearly. Let them also see, too, that their old man was idiot enough to have chosen newspapers as a profession. Sometimes I wish I were a postman. Keep writing, darling. I'm looking forward to getting back to a mountain of letters. I love you.